who doesn't like TikTok? Scrolling through millions of silly dance and lip syncing videos is the perfect way to make anyone smile. No wonder the hugely popular social media app has more than a billion users. What many of them don't know, however, is that TikTok is a Chinese business. Of course, there's no law against that, but what is worrying is the amount of personal data the company harvests from its followers. As you'll see tonight in our joint investigation with the Australian Financial Review, there are legitimate fears the Chinese Communist Party has access to that information and could be using it to spy on us. And that's enough to turn smiles into scowls. The shadowy world of hacking and cyber surveillance is, for most of us, a sinister and frightening place. So often, those who inhabit it are out to get us and our most private information. But you might just view American Thomas Perkins as one of the good guys. My job is to provide the facts of what's happening. That's what I do. And what you do with that information is up to you. Thomas is the data analyst who cracked the source code of TikTok for Australian cybersecurity and intelligence firm Internet 2.0. So in that moment when you realised you'd cracked TikTok's code, how did you feel? Mm, nervous. <laughs> I bet. Through weeks of digital detective work, he revealed the astonishing amount of personal data the Chinese-owned social media app is gathering from its users. Does TikTok need to take all our data? As far as I can determine, in order for the application to actually function properly, it doesn't need to take any of it. It doesn't need your contacts. It doesn't need to know no, how high you are or no, which direction you're standing. It doesn't need any of that, no. I worked on Facebook, WeChat, um, a bunch of applications and none of them actually do this. So this is a whole different league. Yeah, they know a lot about you. Tonight, why time could be running out for TikTok. So do you really believe that the Chinese are using TikTok to spy on us? Yeah, unquestionably, and they've already admitted to it. How much does this video sharing juggernaut really know about you? That is extraordinary. It's a large amount of info for one social media app that's serving your videos. Why is it viewed as such an insidious threat to national security? This is potentially mass electronic surveillance of millions of Australians, and that's a real risk. And can TikTok really be trusted with our most detailed personal information? If the CCP asked for that data... If they asked for that data, we wouldn't give it to them. Well, they wouldn't ask you, they'd take it. In six short years, TikTok has become the app of choice for a screen-obsessed, tech-savvy generation. More than a billion people worldwide have been seduced by its never-ending scroll of strangely compelling videos. Whatever the formula is for success, TikTok has found it. Hey guys, it's Kayla and I'm back with another daily video. I thought today that I would... Kayla Tavares is one of its stars. A bit about myself, I am 22 years old from Sydney, Australia. A TikTok model and influencer now, with nearly half a million followers. How did you get into TikToking? Well, I was actually a dancer. My mum put me into dancing when I was two years old. So when TikTok first came about, it was more so jump on, do a little 15 second dance and, you know, follow kind of the dance trends that were happening. And after that, I grew a bit of a community on there and yeah, everyone was just following along ever since. Kayla posts everything from dance videos to seconds long slices of her everyday life converting her bubbly online persona into a lucrative full-time job. 
What are the most popular sort of videos? What do people like to watch? Well, these days they want to feel something real and they want to connect with someone more and this is the perfect platform for it. For example, here's a video of me just dancing with my girls. And then here's just like a little life recap. Here's me talking to my baby. Oh, you really love You can post anything up on there. I feel like the more you post, the more of a community you build and the more people fall in love with what you're posting. And what's that like when you wake up the next morning and you've got millions of, <laughs> of views? Yeah, well, the first time it happened, I was like, oh my goodness, I was comparing it to like Ed Sheeran had a concert the other day and there were like 40,000 people there. So that's that whole stadium plus all these other people, yeah. like trying to really get a grasp of how many people are seeing my content. Cause it is a lot of people. I mean, one of my videos has over 20 million views um, and it was an eight second video. TikTok is the fastest growing and perhaps most addictive social media platform of them all. The average Australian user, and there are more than 7 million of them, spends an eye-watering 24 hours a month scrolling through its videos. But as the app's influence grows, so does suspicion about why it needs to know so much about us. I think most people would think TikTok's just like any other app. It's very different for two reasons. So because of where TikTok comes from, it's owned by ByteDance. ByteDance is a China-founded company. They have a very different approach to privacy in China to what we do. And the second thing is we looked at the application itself and the app collects more data uh, than other social media apps, aside from apps that were built in Russia. Rob Potter is the boss of Internet 2.0, the cybersecurity firm which has mined the hidden secrets of TikTok's source code. We then went line by line and compared to see if their public statements matched what the app was doing. The painstaking work done by Thomas Perkins revealed some glaring discrepancies, showing TikTok hasn't been entirely honest. So they said they didn't collect GPS location data and we saw that they were heavily collecting location data. They said they didn't collect the device ID, like the actual identity of each user and their phone. Well, we saw that. We saw that it was accessing the user's calendar uh, to see what other things were going on in your diary. These are things that other social media apps don't do. And one of the big things that we saw was TikTok specifically said that they don't have any user data in China. And we saw that when we studied the application, that it was regularly connecting to Chinese servers. So when TikTok says, we don't have a server on mainland China, that is not true. That's definitely not true. Right from the start, TikTok is getting to know a lot about you. Every hour, it pinpoints precisely where you are. It knows the biometrics of your face and the characteristics of your voice. It can access your contacts and information on the other apps you're running. But that's just a tiny part of the slew of data TikTok is harvesting. Much of it spelled out in an extraordinary privacy policy that very few people will ever read. So, for example, here you can see they give themselves permission to access your IP address which mobile carrier on. It says it can collect your keystroke patterns and or rhythms, body language, face and body features, access to your clipboard. So that could be photos that are stored in memory in your phone. It could be your passwords that are stored in memory in your phone. So what we see is over time, they've built out the amount of collection they do. So on the latest version of the app, there is a super location field that allows them to collect which direction you're facing, how fast you're moving, how high off the ground you are, your latitude and longitude. This is unbelievable. Is there anything they don't know about us? No. <laughs> They've given themselves permission to do just about anything here. It gets even worse when you go further because here it says quite explicitly, we will share your information with law enforcement agencies or regulators. So this is literally acknowledging they can share any of your information. With their parent in China or with Chinese government authorities. Wow. And they've it sounds like the stuff of spy movies. But it's that link to the Chinese mainland that has driven fears TikTok could be used as a mass surveillance tool by the communist regime. They're certainly collecting more private information than other apps. 
They even collect more uh, personal data than the sister app in China. So there is a version of TikTok called Doyuan, which runs in mainland China. And the location data in Doyuan is not stored. China doesn't actually let ByteDance, the parent, collect that data on Chinese citizens, but they collect that on Australian citizens in TikTok. If a government rolled out sensors, you know, every few streets, or if we knew that someone was tracking our locations and going through our diaries, there would be public outrage. Yes, you wouldn't trust this data to the health department. Right. So why are you trusting a company that's headquartered in China? Right now, it's a question that's being asked in the highest circles of government, and it could have profound implications for TikTok. Should it be banned altogether? Senator James Patterson is the opposition's spokesman for cybersecurity and countering foreign interference. He reckons we're racing to catch up when it comes to the threat posed by TikTok. Did you ever think TikTok would become a big national security concern? Not when I first heard about it. I thought, like most people, it was probably pretty harmless. But the more I learnt and the more I looked into it, the more worried I became. And I now regard it as a very serious national security problem. So the concerns from here, the hallways of power, right out into the community? That's right, and all around the world. A lot of countries are taking this very seriously as a national security threat. The idea of apps tracking us, our contacts, our movements, what we purchase, what we're into, is not new. Mm. Why should we be so concerned about TikTok mm. tracking us? Well, when Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or these other companies uh, track us, they are trying to sell us advertising and they're trying to make a profit. And ultimately, those companies, because they're headquartered in a country like the United States, is subject to our rule of law in, in a liberal democracy. TikTok is different. It's subject to an authoritarian government and not just any authoritarian government, the largest authoritarian government in the world, China. And that means we have to think about our relationship with TikTok completely differently to how we think about our relationship with other apps headquartered in Western countries. There's no doubt Beijing has its hooks in TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance. There's compelling evidence Communist Party figures have been installed in key positions in the company. But it gets worse. So in 2017, the Chinese government enacted a national intelligence law, part of a suite of national security reforms. And what that law requires is all Chinese citizens and Chinese companies to secretly assist Chinese intelligence agencies if asked. That's a big problem for any company or individual headquartered in China and subject to these laws, particularly if they've got access to our data, because it could mean that our data is being handed over to intelligence agencies and we'd never know anything about it. And they say they don't have a server on mainland China. Uh, that's a kind of totally meaningless piece of information. Uh, they do have servers in places like Singapore and the United States, but their engineers working for ByteDance in China can access and have access that data stored on those servers. So really, wherever the servers are in the world, if their engineers in China can access it, which they can, it's not safe. It's pretty obvious why people like yourself in government departments would be concerned, but for everyday Australians, how concerned should they be? Mm. If you're an ordinary citizen, you might think that individually you're not exposed to any great risk, but there still are risks to us as a society of all of our data being collected in a mass harvesting methodology, which is favoured by the Chinese Communist Party. They know what uh, pushes our buttons, they know what gets our attention, and that's a very powerful tool, particularly if they've got millions of eyeballs they have control over. Super successful campaign, but I think... We Jody Atchison has made it his business to harness the power of TikTok and its addictive algorithm. He's CEO of influencer marketing company We Are Komodo, which manages some of social media's favourite personalities. So what is it about TikTok? Why is it king now in social media land? I think it's the speed of it. I think the algorithm's very advanced, whereby it gives you content that you almost subconsciously want to see. And do you watch a lot of TikTok? Do you get sucked down the rabbit hole? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah. Embarrassing enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be careful. Kayla Tavares was the first TikToker on the company's books and many more have followed. 
So what do you look for? What makes a TikTok star? They need to be able to stop the scrolls. What is going to make someone stop and engage with that content there and then? And that, that's kind of the biggest telling point. Hard task with current attention spans. Very, very difficult, but people can do it. And I guess if you can do it, you're going to be a star, um, like Kayla here. Speaking from experience, the advancement of the actual algorithm of them knowing kind of what content to be sharing with you and at what time, it's so advanced, it's incredible. So it gets kind of what you want in front of you when, when you want it, I guess. And ultimately, in today's world, I think we all just want to have a bit of fun and be entertained, right? Exactly right. Does it concern you that TikTok harvests this enormous amount of personal data from your contacts to your calendar? to your exact location? I mean, mm. where we're sitting right now, the direction we're facing, mm. does that worry you at all? I'm, I'm obviously not a, a political commentator or anything like that. And I may be ignorant to certain things, of course, but not really, to be honest with you. What app doesn't? It's the world we live in, unfortunately. It's a view shared by so many of us, but increasingly, the politicians disagree. And globally, the hottest new TikTok trend has been to ban it. The US, Canada, the EU, New Zealand and the UK have all ordered a full-scale purge of the app from government devices. Here in Australia, the Home Affairs Department is set to announce its findings following a seven-month review of security risks posed by the big social media platforms, including TikTok. The expectation is that we too will outlaw its use on all government phones. This is a company which totally lacks transparency, which has been caught out lying about how its app operates, about how its staff uh, are ultimately directed and controlled by their parent company, uh, about the way in which they use the data that they hold. Should it be banned altogether? I think that option has to be on the table. I think we have to consider that. If it's not possible to mitigate the national security risks by any other means, if banning is the only option to protect Australians, then we have to keep that on the table. And I'm disappointed that the government has already taken that off the table because the app is popular. Well, that sends a very dangerous signal. As long as you're popular, as long as you have lots of users, we won't touch you, we won't regulate you. We should not be sending that message. It might seem drastic, but a complete ban on TikTok is exactly what the United States is threatening. In the last couple of weeks, the US government has told ByteDance to sever its ties with TikTok or else. It's an extraordinary move against a company with a net worth of more than $75 billion. Frankly, stopping at government device only bans isn't enough. That's like shutting down a restaurant for health code violations and saying no more business lunches, but feel free to take your family there. The threat goes beyond simply government devices. Brendan Carr is a boss of the Federal Communications Commission in the US and has been one of the loudest Republican voices in calling for extreme measures. Can TikTok be trusted? No, at this point, uh, I don't think any entity should have any trust in TikTok. There's too much of a history now of gaslighting and misrepresentations about the amount of data it's collecting and where that data has been accessed from. So trust in TikTok right now is about a zero. One of the tipping points was the revelation that TikTok data was used to track Western journalists, an admission made all the more galling by the company's insistence that it was technically impossible. We've already seen sort of the nightmare scenario. TikTok itself belatedly admitted that they uh, used access to the application to surveil, spy, on the location of specific journalists, both here in the US and abroad, that have been writing unfavorable stories about TikTok. Now the question, I think, for regulators and governments across the globe is, are we going to stand up and take some strong, appropriate, in my view, actions to address this known and admitted national security threat. The Australian government has said there won't be a blanket ban here. So if ByteDance is forced to sell in the US, what are the implications for Australia? Well, things are moving very quickly when it comes to TikTok. Just here in the US, a few short months ago, people said it was very, very unlikely that the Biden administration would either force a divestiture or a ban. And as we're seeing right now, the news on that is shifting very quickly. So I think a lot of countries that say they're not anticipating engaging in a ban, um, things are moving very quickly on that front. 
Do you think it's now a case of not if but when TikTok is banned? Yeah, TikTok is engaged in a uh, very uh, high-priced uh, lobbying and messaging campaign here in the U.S., as I'm sure they are in Australia and other parts of the world. But to me, at this point, that's just like moving deck chairs around on the Titanic. I think this thing is heading in one direction, which is sooner, I hope, uh, or later, there is going to be a complete ban of TikTok in the U.S., and I think other countries are going to be in the exact same position. So what does TikTok make of it all? And can they guarantee our information is safe? China's using TikTok to spy on us. True or false? Look, uh, no. Hello, welcome to TikTok. For the very first time, cameras have been allowed into TikTok's Australian headquarters. For a notoriously secretive company, it's perhaps a sign of just how concerned they are about the future. Around 200 staff work here, a busy and creative young team that reflects TikTok's core yep. users. It's actually quite smart because you know it's him every time you're scrolling through. Very arresting. In charge yeah. is General Manager of Operations, Lee Hunter. So this is the first time you've had TV cameras inside yeah. TikTok, nothing to hide? Nothing to hide. We're very proud of the team that we have here. And I'm happy to say that unlike a lot of the other companies that are doing tech layoffs, we're actually hiring. You know, TikTok is growing. And you can assure us everyone here is working independently of bite dads. Absolutely. We're all focused on Australia and we're focused on making the most success we can out of TikTok here in Australia. And There's no question creative. the staff here are passionate and committed, but their company is facing mounting questions over its data practices and its links to China. Do you think TikTok is being unfairly targeted? I do think TikTok is being unfairly targeted. I think a lot of the time we're dealing with accusations, misinformation, a lot of political theatre, frankly, and I don't think it's based on evidence. Well, there is evidence that data can be accessed by the Chinese mainland, and there is certainly evidence that ByteDance has links to the CCP. Look, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. So we're not headquartered in Beijing. TikTok is not a Chinese company. Our parent company, ByteDance, is incorporated outside of China. I think what we see out there is a lot of association with China that's just not true. We're not connected with the CCP. For Australian users, their TikTok data is held in the US and Singapore. And so what's important is to look at the facts. We see a lot of this misinformation that's out there, and one of the reasons why we're chatting today is to try and address some of that. I do think it's important to get the facts across. I think it's a bit disingenuous to say you're not a Chinese company. In TikTok's own submission to the government inquiry this month, TikTok calls itself a Chinese company and says we're very proud of our Chinese heritage. So there is a very strong link to Beijing and the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, do you acknowledge that? Look, we're not affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party. And I think this is something that, that needs to be corrected. So you're saying it's TikTok Australia is not affiliated with the CCP? Look, I, I'm saying that TikTok Australia has nothing to do with the CCP. I'm saying that TikTok has nothing to do with the CCP. But your parent company does. A parent company doesn't have anything to do with the CCP in anything that influences what happens with TikTok. Mm -hmm. It's really important that Aussies understand that the most important thing to us is keeping their user data safe and secure and respecting their privacy. But if the CCP or someone from the CCP or the Chinese government or national intelligence asked for that data, if they we wouldn't know about it. If they asked for that data, we wouldn't give it to them. Well, they wouldn't ask you, they'd take it. Well, we're dealing with hypothetical concerns here that would apply to any Chinese national who's working for any company right. that's based outside of China. The concern that's being expressed is somehow every Chinese national is able and willing to access user data at the behest of the CCP. And that would mean that any Australian company, mm -hmm. according to what some of the politicians are saying, shouldn't be having any Chinese employees based in China. I think that's bordering on xenophobia and I think that's concerning. I think we need to be careful about how we work with China, but at the end of the day, TikTok is not China. We're an entertainment platform. We're about giving people interesting videos in their day. As TikTok's troubles mount, scrutiny is growing. Senator James Patterson is expected to haul the company's Australian executives to parliament as he examines how social media platforms 
can be weaponised for foreign interference. One of the things that TikTok has hit back with is that this is a xenophobic kind of attack on China to be calling out TikTok's behaviour and lack of accountability. It's got nothing at all to do with the ethnicity of the people who work for or run TikTok. I couldn't care less about that. I do care the government that they're beholden to. And whether it was the Chinese Communist Party or any other authoritarian system, we'd have to be concerned about that. It is a very powerful actor in our region. And that means we have to view this through a different light, through a national security lens, otherwise we're being very complacent. In Washington two days ago, a make or break moment for TikTok. TikTok is the spy in Americans' pockets. The company's global CEO, Zhao Zichu, put through the ringer for five gruelling hours. Have you directed them to change that source code? Uh, Congressman, um, if you give me a bit of time to just No, I, I don't, I, it's a yes or no question. Why, if you had nothing to hide, would you need to downplay the association with ByteDance in China? This is from an internal memo from your company. Mr. Chu, how can all of these countries and our own FBI director have been wrong? I think a lot of risks that are pointed out are hypothetical and theoretical risks. Um, I have not seen any evidence. I'm, you know, it was an really unconvincing so performance that will help decide the fate right now, of TikTok in the US and could have implications here too. TikTok users like influencer Kayla Tavares are now waiting to see what happens. Say TikTok was to, you know, look, we're banning it, we're shutting it down or whatnot. A lot of people might be a bit unhappy about it, but I don't do politics. All of that type of stuff, I'm kind of just going to leave it to the politicians and let them decide what's best for the users. I'm just a friendly user of the app and I love it, so I'm just going to continue doing it. It seems inconceivable that an app with more than a billion users could vanish overnight. But as TikTok's troubles mount, cybersecurity expert Robert Potter is convinced that something has got to give. I think there's a place where TikTok shouldn't operate. I think it's showing us that in government, on government phones, things like that, that's a no-brainer that they shouldn't be there. So should TikTok be banned? I'm not for banning individual platforms, but I am for setting standards that if they can't meet, they can't be here. So I'd say that the onus is on TikTok to explain how it respects our privacy. So we need to ask the right questions and make sure we get the right answers from them if we want to let them operate. What about the 20-year-old lip syncer who says, I don't really care if Xi Jinping knows where I went for breakfast? I think you're an idiot, but sure. <laughs> I'm not going to look to a 20-year-old lip syncer for leading opinions on privacy legislation. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.